So this is instant accounting solutions from FNB. And uh, you can go th to their website and you can see some information around um, instant accounting. So the first thing I see here is uh, you can call them. You can start now. You can yeah, generate reports. Uh, oh, you can even find an accountant. Okay, that's very interesting. So they can, okay, so you do have some accountants that are based across South Africa that you can engage with. But remember, it's not rocket science. It's pretty easy. And I'm not sure if they uh, charge you. However, you can see these are accounting firms here. So that's pretty interesting. If you go to Gauteng, these, so you can see there's quite a lot of um, accounting firms that are actually using instant accounting. So that's great. So you have some accountants, but I'm not sure if they can do your financial reports as well. Then the next thing is uh, instant accounting for accountants. So what's important here, it's free to business account clients. It's a free use of the product, telephonic setup and support, free access to historical data. And um, there is a team, a support team, when you ask them a question, they, they can help, but they are not very strong in the financials. They know the basics and if they can't help you, they'll say, go and ask how, you know, go and ask an accountant. So this is true. You can get um, cash flow, income and expenditure reports from instant accounting. Okay. So for me, I just see this very as a powerful bookkeeping tool. Uh, you don't need to be an accountant to use this, but you do need some accounting understanding. Under accounting insights, okay, they're talking about the chart. And you can get a report sent to your inbox. Okay, and you can have unlimited users to the instant accounting. So it's not limited to your bookkeeper. Any, whoever you decide you want to give them a unique username and password to get into there. And remember on the accounting system, you're not transacting with money. So you can relax. They just will know how much you have in your account, but they cannot transact. Okay. Then what else is offered? Okay, so there's some questions. So there's quite a lot of information here. So what's really nice is the VAT functionality that I'm using. Okay, there's different types of reports. What are the limitations? It's a web-based application, yes. So you can't work offline, you need the internet. And sometimes you do get some glitches where uh, they're busy doing some technical uh, maintenance so you can't do work, but that's very seldom. It's, it's you don't really feel it. Okay, so there's many functions here. What are the key features and functions of instant accounting? Import data from your business FNB statement and it allocates it to the various payments and receipts. Okay, so we'll explain that in the video. Uh, you can split payments. Okay, so you can provide customer invoices and supply invoices. I don't really use it for instant accounting. I create a, my own invoices differently. 
This is pretty interesting. Can generate debtors aging analysis report. Okay, so that's possible. So what are the key benefits of instant accounting? Bookkeeping becomes simple and can be done by business owners with little or no accounting knowledge. Okay, that's relatively true. While easy to use, it is a sophisticated and accurate bookkeeping solution which automatically generates detailed financial statements and reports, including income statements, balance sheets, and VAT reports, using your F&B bank statements. It is fully online. <coughs> web-based solution enabling business owners managers to view and or update the business financial reports at any place or time the solution is instant convenient and saves the user a considerable amount of time so that's true you're not copying and pasting what's or typing information from your bank statement to another system and you save a lot of time the solution provides daily financial date data concerning your business it can result in an overall cost saving. You can potentially save on software costs and on internal and external bookkeeping costs. Okay, you can, it's true. And, um, but also take note of business account is not cheap. Uh, it does cost um, over 200 Rand per month. So you can kind of say, okay, if you don't really having a lot of transactions in your bank account, you can just say, look, okay, the extra money that I'm paying is for the functionality of instant accounting to give you a peace of mind on the, the bank charges. All your accounting data stored in FNB secure services with added benefit of backups being done by FNB. Okay, so so far they have been reliable in the past three or four years that I've used them. Uh, no software has to be bought, set up, or maintained. How much does it cost? It's free. Your free support. And this is how you register. Okay. So it's only limited to business accounts, not your personal accounts. Okay, so this is the the general email address for any issue and there's a team that uh, responds and but it's a relatively small team you can see the names I mean they, they're quite frequent names that are keep appearing so it's not a big team it's actually a small team so in today's video I'm going to be sharing a demo that I did with one of my clients and the client was was questioning or wondering could he use an ERP system instead of the FNB uh, instant accounting system and I am showing the client the benefits of having instant accounting as compared to using another ERP system and it's true there are free open source ERP systems out there but if you don't have time instant accounting can make bookkeeping very simple I've come to a place where I don't need to go through my bank account. I've created a very simple um, thing for me to use. Okay, so log in. Okay, okay. Then um, you've got the different things that I spend money on categorized. And here it says unassigned payments. So it means that I need to now categorize it. So it's a payment that went, but it's not categorized according to the accounting system. Um, and because my financial year started in March, mm -hmm. you know, that's, so there's, there's not a lot of history. I, I'm, this is my first month in the new year. Okay. So I've got assets, I've got a vehicle that I, I sold to the company. So it's a means in which I can claim some depreciation. We've got some computer equipment, some office equipment, other investments, um, and then liabilities. This was like related to the loan. When I sold the vehicle to the company, the company now had to pay me back. 
So before I claim a salary, the first thing I can do when I sell an asset to the company, so when I get money from the business, I can take it, I can pay myself, and then I can categorize it as a loan being paid back to the director. Okay. okay. So you can already start to generate money, but it doesn't have to be declared to SARS because you've sold a vehicle to the to the business to use. So then I click on transactions, All right? So this is from the current and last month. Okay, so let's just do current month. Okay, so March. Okay, okay anyway, it's showing me that. So this is what you would see on your bank statement. All of mm -hmm. these transactions, right? Mm -hmm. You don't really see this portion here, the, the portion on the right, the category. You just see date and a description. Okay. So it's already uploaded. And what I do now is I just go and I change the category. So bank charges, that's fine. That's my account, bank charges. Um, this year I went to a shop matrix and I bought, uh, it's not secure. So sometimes they can default okay. to a category, but I'm saying no, it's a computer, computer expense. All right. And it included VAT because I'm VAT registered. I do this kind of an activity. I have to say it's VAT registered. And then I can put some description on it to say uh, repair to desk top. Okay, and then I say assign selected. There we go. Okay. So it's changed and the tick means it's a VAT. Okay. All right, also, um, this is just, I'm just like, for the bank charges, the bank charges also VAT. Mm -hmm. so I'm gonna say VAT included, so that I can, when I do my VAT calculations, it shows. Um, then I bought something at pick and pay. I used my card and I spent 400 rand. So because it's so pick and pay, it thinks you bought groceries, but I didn't buy groceries. Right, I went there and I topped up my eTOL. So I have okay. created different categories. Travel eTOL, it includes VAT, and that's that's pretty stand straightforward. eTOL fees. Now, did you notice that you had a money on call account on your um. bank? The call account is being this it's like a savings account. Correct. Okay. So for me, okay. I have the main account and this the the, the call account. So okay. when I need money to spend in the business, or when I receive money, I put a chunk of it in my call account because that's where I can generate interest. Oh yeah. Okay. And then when I need to make some payments, then I take I transfer the money from the call account to my main account. And then I can transact with the fees that's normally charged whenever I transact from a main account. Okay. If I can still make an EFT payment from my call account, but they'll charge me 40 bucks. Mm. That's ridiculous. So they advise me, look, just keep the money in there to gain more interest. Money in your main account will never ever get interest. But if it's in the call account, you'll get interest. When you want to transact with money, first push it out into your main account and then transact that way. Okay. But if you tap, if you take it, tap, or you pay for something by EFT from the call account, you get charged a service fee of 40 Rand. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what happens here is that from my money on call, the call account, 
I took out 5,000 and it became money that came into my main account. So you can see here, it's an internet transfer. You can see. All right, I just want to zoom in. All right, so it's an internet transfer of 5,000 and top up. So I just use that word as a, to say, okay, I'm topping up my main account because I've got some expenses. So I just call it investments. So investments other, there's no tax or anything because it's money or VAT because it's money moving from one to the other. So investments other, and then when it came into my bank account, I call it also investments other. So what's happening is it's just canceling each other out. Okay. Uh, top up. Okay, so this here is vehicle. So because I have transferred the vehicle under the uh, the business, I can claim petrol money. But diesel, there's no VAT on diesel. Okay. It's only like if you're in the farming business and you're buying chunks, then you there's a special way of claiming VAT. So there's no VAT on that. I also bought some petrol here. So I'm just changing it. Uh, so that it's, I understand it's not just a general motor expense, it's fuel. Okay. Investments is another one. I also spent some money there. So the nice thing is that you can expense these things against your, the business. Mm. Uh, here's, okay, unassigned payment, right? So this is Microsoft. So I pay a license. And it's just your standard, it's a computer expense. And it in, includes VAT, because I've seen that, uh, that invoice. And here there's one called medical. So this is, some, this is purchased from Forms Media. So I just bought some stationery there. So it's not medical, stationery. Stationery. And it, I've got an invoice that is VAT. And I'm just trying to see, what did I buy? I bought a label machine uh, labels and uh, a, a white board just uh, replacements. Okay. So you can put this description there because when you read the report, you're not looking at all of your receipts and things like that. You don't look, you just kind of remember. So this is just for the month of March. So it's very, very easy at the end of the month, just to quickly go and see what things do I need to just categorize. And because we're in a professional space, we don't have a lot that um, we are spending money on. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's, it's easy. And if you had now another system, this is now yeah. where you would have to manually put all of these transactions onto that system. Okay. That's the disadvantage. So when you have instant accounting, it shows you everything already that- um, Is there a way to say, um, export that data? Say um, in Excel, in Excel um, or CSV format from from um, yeah from from this software. Uh, yes, there is a way. I'm going to show you how. Okay, so I'm just okay. checking here. This is uh, an assets less than seven thousand. Okay, I'm going to just. So this is what I did. I'm done. I'm done now with my categorizing. Mm -hmm. okay. that's how quick it is done mm -hmm. then how does it now add value so i go to my reports page okay i go to my management pack it's one of the ones that i normally use i choose excel i can view okay so this is it it's very it's not a lot of lines that i have i can download this Okay. So my expenses, so year to date, so remember it's my new financial year. All right, yeah. so it's starting from March. 
and when you, if I was pulling this information out in April, I would have March over here and April over here. Okay. Okay. Then you'll see bank charges for the month of March, 168. I can click down here and I can see those transactions. Okay. Okay. And because I clicked on the, the tick box of VAT, it has taken 15% off. Mm. Okay, so when you are VAT registered, your income statement will not include VAT. Okay. All right, but if you're not VAT registered, you would see the full figure because I think it was like 80 bucks or something like that. That's the cool thing about instant accounting is that if I had an income of uh, say 10,000 Rand and what is uh, 10,000 times 0 0.15, 1,500, so 10,000 minus that. Okay, so according, because I'm VAT registered, my income will show on this income and expense sheet as um, 8,500 rand, but I got 10,000 rand from the client. So this 1,500 rand is now managed separately somewhere else. It's still there, but an accounting perspective, it will say, okay, uh, so Celine, this is what, VAT in or VAT out? VAT input, okay. So it'll say VAT input. And mm -hmm. then the system will then look for any expenses where I ticked VAT, right? And it'll total, okay, your VAT output. So for that month, you bought particular items, but maybe it's about 500 Rand. I mean, the VAT portion of those items is 500 Rand. Okay. So generally in a professional services, you don't really spend a lot of VAT. Okay. Yeah. You're not buying a lot of things. You're just running around getting things done. Okay. If you were paying a service provider that was giving you professional fees and they charge you VAT, then obviously then it'll go up. So yeah. Every month you're looking at VAT input. So this 1,500 Rand is what SARS is trusting you to manage on their behalf. Okay. But then you'll say, okay, technically I did work. I charged the client uh, 1,500 VAT. So I'm expected to pay this 1,500 to SARS. Okay. Right. But before I do that, I can say, hey, SARS, I actually bought some things, meaning I was stimulating the, in, the, 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 the economic, um, the economy by purchasing. Mm -hmm. So kindly incentivize me for that. So you say, okay. So your SARS, your VAT calculation is just VAT input minus VAT output. So that is what a thousand rand is what I'm obligated to pay for my VAT for that month. Okay. So you manage that separately, but instant accounting has a way of doing it. So all I did was just, I just had to categorize it and just put the tick box for the items that I've expensed. Or even if there was income, I must tick it that, hey, there's VAT included in that. And the system manages it for me. Okay, but that is another topic on its own, but that's just the principle. So all my figures here exclude that. Okay, so there's my bank charges, my computer expenses. I can see the stuff that I'm spending on computers, um, insurance for my vehicle. Um, this is the fuel so far I've used in this month, printing. Uh, salary and wages for someone in the team, uh, small equipment. Mm -hmm. So what is small equipment? So sometimes you'll just be saying, what is small equipment? I've got assets less than 7,000 rand. So I've separated that. Oh, okay, we bought a monitor for the office. Then I'm using internet fiber. And then Eto. That's it. 
So that's my expenses, negative 10,000. So negative 10,000 is what I've started the year with. Okay. And then each month it'll just keep accumulating and but you can always see the detail of it. So for now, you're just seeing it as one line because it's the first month, but you'll have many, many more lines below that just sums it up as a one liner to eat all fees. Okay. okay. Then the other thing that is uh, when you configure, um, you can put manual transactions. If people pay you cash, you, you can also acknowledge it here so that it gives you the picture of what's in the bank and what money you are holding as cash with you. Okay. So you don't lose that, that focus there. Then the other thing about the management report is that it's got a balance sheet. So over here, it shows you um, what's in your capital, how much of money have you given. Um, it, there's a breakdown of your assets that you have in the company. Um, and each year you can see how it's changed. Um, and then uh, this is the cash that you have in the bank. And here's my tax my tax, no, my VAT related information here. So it's, it's managed separately. It's not involved in the income tax. Okay. Okay. So this is just information, but don't stress, but it, it keeps accumulating cash flow details, budget versus in, okay. Not, it's not really important. I don't really use that. The core thing about a business is just that you need this. This is the most important thing, income and expense. Okay. As long as you are categorizing this and it looks like this and it tells you the health of your business. How did you achieve in this month? I was in a negative. Okay. Next month, hopefully I'll be in a positive. Okay. Then uh, let's go back here. So when you go to configure, this is now the steps that um, Celine Dilla can also help with. You start with business settings. Mm -hmm. And that's where then you can decide when, you know, you'd, you'd say module instant accounting. There's all of these other cash flow invoicing. You don't need that. Just instant accounting. I have a VAT registration number, but, uh, and that allows it to activate the functionality of VAT. But if you don't have it, you don't do that. Then you, you define your financial year. When does it start? When does it end? Mm hmm then your reporting is according to that. Yeah, you know, there's different, this is just the basics of setting it up. And there is a place where now you can also, oops, okay, that's done. I want to take you to um, GL. So general ledger. So this is the categories that they are standard and then you can also customize it for your requirements. Okay. Okay. Because you now, like for me, I, I don't want to just do telephone slash cell phone. I want to see how much of cell phone did I spend? What is my internet cost looking like? Um, okay. It's just taking a bit too long. So when I have these reports, it becomes now easy for me to give it to my accountant who then creates a financial report. Okay. Up here. So this is the categories that's available. Okay. So there's many different things that you can, some things you might not, and you'll never use. It's okay. Um, but like here, I've got under admin and management and accounting, I've made a, I create a sub uh, category called CIPC annual returns. Okay. okay. So that's it. So even if you didn't want to get that kind of detail, you just say, oh, it's related to admin and management accounting. So on the, um, your financial statement, it will be on this level here. Mm -hmm. Right. But for me, I want to know, okay, what is, what, what did I spend money on under admin? Oh, it was my CIP annual returns. Then web hosting, there's cost there that I put in there because it's, it's related to advertising. So you can see the key thing here is that you look at this number here. So this is like the main category. 
And then when you create a subcategory, you can go, it becomes 304 slash one. Okay. And it just keeps going down. So let's see. So this is everything related to expenses. So this catering, um, Korea postage, depreciation is something we use quite often. Um, um, medical, if I did some medical test. Um, here's my vehicle. So I've got something that's related to repairs. And if I'm doing my licensing, I want PPE. I want to see how much do I spend on PPE each year, cell phone, airtime, data, e toll. So you see, under travel and accommodation, I, I've made one saying, hey, I want travel is related to e tolls. Okay. Yeah. So that's. And then if there's, yeah, this is where your share capital goes to. So according to your share certificate, you would then have a, a category for, uh, it'll be reflective on your instant accounting, your shares. Okay, so that's, uh, so there's, there's quite a lot of categories that is there available, which you can then also then update to your needs. Okay. You know, so when I like, okay, I'm just on the screen here. This is like the list of all the transactions. All right, they can tell me, so they should debit credit. This is that detailed description that I've written there saying label machine labels, white duster, right? And uh, the ERP system that you're using as well, you, are you sure about the, how, how it does VAT for you? So here's my yeah. VAT. Yeah. I, I need to, I need to, to look. I, I'm sure it does, but I need to look into how. Um, it, I mean, if it does it well compared to to this. This is the VAT 201. It's a it's a standard SARS form that they have created for you already. To say when you mm -hmm. go to SARS, you fill it exactly how it looks here for that month. So I didn't get any income, so everything is zero. But it's saying there for the month of March. This is the VAT from an expense perspective that's been totaled. And they're already showing this is what you would you would submit. So it's catered to a South African flavored or SARS systems. Okay. So that's where I see the benefit of because on the counting side, it's just it's just the money in out. The ERP side is more on purchase orders. You know, you want to gain control of things, multiple things but you need a system to do that. Yeah. So that's the thing, even in, in SAS or when we used to work with the SAP system that's integrated, mm. as a manager, you're not bothered about the finances. You're just worried about SAP processing your purchase it's order. An operational. Um, Very operational, you just wanna manage that. The finance side, the finance people look at it, yeah. Yeah. So if you're an entrepreneur, it just makes it more complicated now to try and bring it into your ERP system, which could do the same thing with your platform that you get from FNB. So that's for me, that's the benefit I've seen with FNB where, and you just saw what I did now. It's just five minutes of just categorizing things. Yeah. And it's and it's done. So I'm ready then for the month. And then the specific actions that I do that I need to do on a monthly basis of adding depreciation if I have some assets. So that's, then I'm done. Then I leave it and then I move on. But the report just gives you that analysis of, okay, how are things in the business? Good or bad? Yeah. That's it. Okay. Okay. So that's the demo that I wanted to share with you. So I'm going to just stop recording.